Well, hello and welcome to another. Well, hello and welcome to another Faith, Philosophy and Life with me, Mr. Shelton. It's great to see you. And this is quite a personal one to me, this one at the moment. Um, what links all these pictures together? Just see if you have a thing. I've probably just given you a bit of a clue. Yep, yeah, they're all things that I love. They're all about me. Me, 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 me. Okay, so we've got a birthday cake there. That birthday cake was made during lockdown for me last year. During, you know, remember that sunny lockdown that we had? Not the one that we've just had, but the one in the summer. Um, lovely cake. Lovely. Felt really special. Couldn't go to the shops to buy anything. Then you've got a photo of my kids on the beach. And you've got my little girl and a cat. We've got bikes, because I like biking. We've got, have to say it, Walt Disney World, which I absolutely adore. And chocolate. Now I wonder... Which of those are my favourite? I probably shouldn't go there, should I? Right, so I'm going to move on. But I wonder about what things do you love? Have a think about that, because here's our cheesy intro sequence. So we're thinking about friendship, remember? And uh, our title for today's lesson is, Is Love All You Need? Thinking of the Beatles song, All You Need Is Love. Do, 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 do. Uh, but is love all you need? So we're going to explore how the word love can be understood in different contexts. And that's the point of today's lesson. Uh, as always, do pause me as we go and uh, do make any notes. And obviously, I will be asking you to send things through to your teachers. Uh, by the end of this lesson, it's going to be uh, good if you can describe two different understandings of the word love. Great if you can explain how love can make a positive difference in relationships. And even better if you can decide which definition of love you think is the best and why. So we're going to be looking at our communication skills, our creative thinking skills, and also what is right in terms of our morals and what the culture teaches us. During today's session then, we've got the link pictures that we've done. We've got a media clip. We're going to have some definitions, there's a worksheet, and then we're going to look at some quotes as well to finish off with. So, it's a little bit of homework that I'm setting some of you, which I think is a really good idea. Love is, and what you need to do, you don't anything longer than 20 minutes, you've done something wrong with this. So there's a bit of homework that you may want to do if your teacher set you it, is uh, to talk about what you think love is. It's a phrase and a picture that you're going to draw. You can do it on a cloud or a heart, so we can make some hanging decorations, because I think that would be lovely to do. So let's just start thinking about our first thing. So what you need to do is you need to use the description below in order to access this worksheet. And you'll find a worksheet there linked to a media clip. I'm going to play a media clip to you and you're going to answer the questions on the sheet. It's as simple as that. So let's watch this media clip now about what love is and what Christians understand by the word love. You write the answers on the sheet and then we'll move on together. So make sure you've got the sheet and then carry on playing me. So if you've heard of Jesus, you probably know about one of his famous teachings called the Golden Rule. Do to others what you would want them to do to you. And this actually is a restatement of something else that Jesus said, that the meaning of life is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that's really beautiful, but what does he mean exactly by the word love? It's an unclear word in English because you can love your mom and you can love pizza. And if the word love means the same thing in both of those cases, your mom's gonna feel real bad. 
So what did Jesus mean in his language? Well, first of all, this love your neighbor phrase is a quotation from the Hebrew scriptures where the word for love is ahava. However, the language Jesus spoke and taught in from day to day it was a cousin language of Hebrew, that is Aramaic, in which the word for love is rachma. But then, as Jesus' followers spread his teachings around the world, they translated them into Greek using the word agape. But here's what's fascinating. The earliest followers of Jesus who wrote the books of the New Testament in Greek, they didn't learn the meaning of agape by looking it up in ancient dictionaries. Rather, they looked to the teachings of Jesus and the story of his life to redefine their very concept of love. So one time, Jesus was asked about the most important command in the Jewish scriptures. And he first quoted from the ancient prayer in the Torah called the Shema. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. So love for God is the most important thing. But then Jesus quickly followed up by saying another command from the Torah was also the most important, to love your neighbor as yourself. So which is the most important, loving God or loving your neighbor? Jesus' answer is yes. To ask the question means you don't get his point. For Jesus, they are two sides of the same coin. Your love for God will be expressed by your love for people and vice versa, they're inseparable. And so this makes it clear that for Jesus, agape love is not primarily a feeling for someone else that happens to you, like our phrase, I fell in love. For Jesus, love is action. It's a choice that you make to seek the well-being of people other than yourself. Jesus also went on to teach that genuine love for God and others means seeking people's well-being without expecting anything in return, especially from people who are in difficult situations who can't repay you even if they wanted to. According to Jesus, this kind of generous love reflects the very heartbeat of God. And he took this even further. Jesus said that the ultimate standard of authentic love is how well you treat the person that you can't stand. Or in his words, you shall love your enemy and do good to them, expecting nothing nothing in return. For Jesus, this kind of enemy embracing love imitates the very character of God himself. Now we wouldn't be talking about Jesus still today if he had only said things like love your enemy. This is how he actually lived. Jesus was constantly helping and serving the people around him in very practical and tangible ways. And he consistently moved towards poor and hurting people who couldn't benefit him in return. He showed love for the forgotten ones, the people who usually fall through the cracks. And when Jesus eventually marched into Jerusalem, he made himself an enemy of the leaders of his people by accusing them of hypocrisy and corruption. But then instead of attacking his enemies to overthrow them, he allowed them to kill him. Jesus died for the selfishness and corruption of his enemies because he loved them. After Easter morning, Jesus and then his followers claimed that it was the power of God's love for the world that was revealed in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. As the Apostle Paul put it, God demonstrated his own agape for us in this. While we were still sinners, the Messiah died for us. Or in the words of the Apostle John, God's own agape was revealed when he sent his one and only son into the world so that through him we could have life. And for John, then, this leads naturally to the conclusion, beloved ones, if that's how God has loved us, then we ought to show love for one another. So Christian faith involves trusting that at the center of the universe is a being overflowing with love for his world, which means that the purpose of human existence is to receive this love that has come to us in Jesus and then to give it back out to others, creating an ecosystem of others-focused, self-giving love. And that's the New Testament meaning of agape love. So, quick quiz then for your time. We like quick quizzes, so let's just see what you know. Which of these are permanent and which ones are temporary? So, I truly love my child. Is that a permanent example of love or is that a temporary example of love? I really love my new bike. I will always love the ring that my grandma left me when she died. I will love my wife for the rest of my life. God will always love me. I love my best friend Sarah. Jesus died for me because he loved me. She's really good looking. I love her. Okay, so let's just see if we identify which ones are permanent and which ones are temporary. So, truly love the, my child. 
Hopefully that's permanent. I really love my new bike. That's temporary because you're going to get rid of your bike and it's new. Grandma's ring. Hopefully that's permanent. I will love my wife for the rest of the life. Hopefully permanent. God will always love me. Permanent. I love my best friend Sarah. I'm going to suggest possibly temporary because you could have a falling out. Jesus died for me because he loved me. That would be permanent. And she's really good looking. I love her. Honestly, don't don't be judging anything like that. That's definitely temporary. That bubble will soon burst. But you could obviously argue we're against me with any of that. Okay, so um, we're going to think about the different types of love that there are. Now, in Greek, there are four different words that describe the type of love. Um, it's like going and speaking to the Eskimolians. I'm making that word up, but you know what I mean. Uh, with regards to snow, you ask them what snow is. They have no idea what you're talking about because they've got hundreds of words for the word snow. Um, we Brits generally just have one word for the word snow, which is it's snowing. Uh, and that's all we need. But we Brits only have one word for the word love, which is possibly not helpful either. Whereas in Greece, they have four words for the word love. So my question is, does anyone know what the different types of love? Not the Greek words. I don't expect to know Greek, but that'd be cool if you do. But do you know what the different types of love are? Have a think about that for a moment. Okay, so there's four main different types of love. There's agape, or agape, it's really agape, which is unconditional love. There's storge, which is love for things. There's phylos, or philia, which is friendship love, and eros, which is romantic love. So just thinking about those in turn before we go on to our next little task because I, what I want you to do is while we're going through this actually just get these scribbled down with examples next to them of things that would fit that category for you. So storage is the love for stuff and let's be honest there's all things we all got stuff that we love haven't we? we've got items possessions which are things that we would say that we love. Um, I'd even dare I suggest have my cats under that. I would say they're an item or a thing. I have storage storage love for them then there's philios which is friendship love for brotherly sisterly love um in terms of people that you know your friends all of those would be philos so again be writing down maybe some examples of people that you experience philos for so you've got storage and you've got philos then you've got eros now that may not apply to some of us watching this because maybe we've never been romantically in love with people maybe we've never had our heart broken yet better to have loved and lost than never have loved at all said one philosopher i'm not entirely sure that's true but anyway let's not talk about me we're talking about you so maybe write down if you have uh fallen in love you've seen that magical person across the room and thought Fwah. maybe put their name down maybe photograph it send it to them just to let them know and then the last version of love is agape unconditional love love for people you don't know love for your neighbors love for people on the street homeless people so we in britain use the word love okay and we say we love all these things but the way i love chocolate and the way i love my children hopefully are two very different things the way i love a homeless person and the way i love food are two totally different things i wouldn't eat a homeless person just for the record but i would eat food in the same way my love for my wife and my love for my bookcase two very different things but we use the word love interchangeably so in your books what i'd like you to do is to make sure you've got those four things written down explain what they mean and then maybe come up with an example of um each of those as well so pause me now and then do that and then come back to me in a few minutes okay so what we've done so far today is we thought it'd be good if you could describe two different understandings of love and great if you could talk about how love can make a positive impact on relationships that's really where we're going to go right now so uh, there is another worksheet in the description below you'll have seen two there when you clicked on earlier so this is the main worksheet for the lesson and this is going to take you the vast majority of the rest of the time that you have got 
And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to have a look at that and to complete it as you go. It's got Bible questions on there, so you know how love's understood in the Bible, what Christians think about love. It's got your little summary boxes and things like that. So I'd like you to access that now. Uh, you can obviously write it in your book. Or you can print it off and handwrite it. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. Give yourself 20 minutes or so to do that and then come back to me. So pause me now and let's get that worksheet done. Okay, so what we're going to do now to sort of finish off with is sort of think about a little bit more about what are what we think the best definition of love is and why from what you've done. And to do this, I'm actually going to look at some quotes with you. Um, and I'm going to ask you to create your own quote about love. Now, I've just done a quick Google image search um, about what love looks like in terms of quotes about it. And you think back to the homework I set at the start. And I always want you to have a quick look at this now. So these are some um, examples of famous quotes about love. Uh, you've got, uh, love is like the wind, you can't see it, but you can feel it by Nicholas Sparks. You've got, uh, a kiss is a lovely trick designed by nature to stop speech when words are superfluous. Can't even say that word. You've got, any man who can drive safely while kissing pretty girls is simply not giving the kiss the attention it deserves. So, Albert Einstein supposedly said that. Martin Luther King said this, I've decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Okay, can't argue with Martin Luther King on that one. And then, um, if today were the last day of your life, would you like to do what you are about to do today? The great Steve Jobs. So you might want to do a quick Google search on that and get some ideas about how love can be demonstrated. And then maybe, just maybe, what you're going to do, maybe just maybe, what you're going to do is to create your own little poster about love with a quote that you've got as well. So I'm going to leave that there today. You've done uh, incredibly well as always. Thanks for your time. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Wash hands. God bless you. And I'll be seeing you soon.